Hi, I'm Michelle Allen, and this is my final presentation for the AG Missions History and Governance class. For the past 37 years, I've been faithfully attending church every Sunday except some vacations and illnesses. I have also, during more than half that time, worked on staff at a church. I love going to church and being part of a congregation. I love teaching and praying with people. I love singing and enjoying fellowship with other Christians each week. I've noticed a shift in how the Holy Spirit works during that time. In the 80s and early 90s, services may have had people speaking in tongues, prophecies going out, um, words of knowledge, uh, preaching that included altar calls for baptism in the Holy Spirit, altar ministry with the laying on of hands. People who experience church like that say, well, the Holy Spirit isn't allowed to move in services anymore. Well, I say maybe God is asking you to do the moving in your relationships somehow take up in small groups the movement of the Holy Spirit. I think this is critical because services at the church building have become shorter, more social, and new convert and crowd focused. We shake hands, we greet new people, we sing together, we have coffee, we get prayer, we chat in the lobby, we hear a teaching. It's more like a party or a social gathering than a gathered pursuit for depth in our relationship with God. I'm not saying that that is a bad thing, and I'm also not saying that we don't have the pursuit of depth in our relationship with God, but it seems that having that depth and moving toward it requires a, a more personal approach. Now, I've noticed in my own small groups and relationships, serious communication with fellow Christians will happen during small group, Bible studies, coffee meetings, small gatherings, where personal ministry has more meaning and can get more personal and targeted like coaching opposed to um, what happens during a game time. The churches seem to move away from experiential services to more watcher services. For a few years after noticing this, it really upset me. I would go to church and hear the sermons. I would look at the intent faces of the people in the crowd. I would see new people coming in too, and I, I begin to realize that God is there, moving, working, ministering in the method that our culture seems to have adapted to. God is showing us these days that the building is just a gathering place where Christians can come together, learn, share, and receive, yet the intimacy needed for uh, Christians to grow still happens outside the building. Christians should be bringing their faith to their friendships, answering questions, offering prayer, friend to friend, face to face. This is the biblical model. Jesus in Matthew 28, 19 told us, to make disciples. Making disciples requires face-to-face -face contact, mentoring and discussion, coaching, sharing from the heart. None of that can happen very well in a large group setting. When groups of Christians met in the early church days, they were sharing a meal, teaching, sharing songs and communion. Everyday life was very different from what it is now, and we need to purposefully create opportunities for disciple-making. Church may be where the dedication begins, but relationship evangelism can only take place in smaller, more intimate settings. That's how disciples became apostles, how converts became deacons, how a deacon became a Barnabas, how a Pharisee became a Paul, and how a kid in church became a, Tim became a Timothy. Paul calls Timothy a son because the amount of time that he invested in that relationship. And all the stories about the missionaries like Lillian Trasher, Alice Luce, Marie Brown, Alice Flower, they were all discipled into ministry by someone who took time for one-on-one -on -one mentoring, coaching relationships. That's how the New Testament leaders trained new leaders. Like Paul in 2 Timothy 2, where Paul tells Timothy to pass on what he's learned so that the people he passes on to can pass on to others what they have learned. We even see how one-on-one -on -one relationships fueled the fires of revival in our own Pentecostal and AG history. Seymour learned from Parham and then made friends who invited him into their home and it grew from there. We ought to be asking individuals in our smaller circles of friends, how can I pray for you? Do you know Jesus? Are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Do you speak in tongues? Do you know how to share the gospel or your testimony? Do you know how to pray with someone to receive Jesus? We ought to be sharing Holy Spirit experiences in these small group settings where questions can be asked and answered. Laying on of hands can be done. There's time to cry and worship, hug, share scriptures. So share what God is saying through you to another person.
Thank you.